I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Dumps Woodworking Journal, and I love my workshop. But not everyone has access to fancy tools, and frankly, you don't need a fully equipped workshop to build high-quality furniture for your home. Over the next several months, we'll be making a series of projects that require minimal tools and simple materials that you can buy in any home center. Each of these projects will teach you progressively more skills as you graduate from the basics to more advanced joinery techniques. Even if you're a seasoned woodworker with a shop full of tools, I think you'll get some ideas from these videos. And if you're a beginner, these videos will show you how to build furniture you can be proud of on a shoestring. Our first project will be a fully adjustable bookcase with a clever hidden compartment inside. I'll be using a circular saw and a pneumatic nailer, but you can get away with just a circular saw in your backyard. First, let's talk materials. You'll need some good quality plywood. Stay away from the sanded pine stuff. It will not look good even if you paint it, and it's likely to warp over time. And definitely, no MDF or particle board. It simply won't last, especially heavy pieces of furniture that you may move over the years. Instead, use the 3 quarter inch birch veneered plywood that you find at the home center. It's more expensive, but it's strong, stable, and suitable for both paint or a clear finish. Even with good plywood, this project will likely cost under $200, which is far less than a bookcase of comparable size and quality would cost you in a furniture store. Below this video, you'll find a link to a set of dimension drawings, which will include a materials list and measurements for all the parts that you have to cut out. I cut my parts in the backyard on a pair of sawhorses. I laid a couple of 2x4s on top, then a sheet of OSB. Having a good base to work upon is a key to making clean, accurate cuts with a circular saw. You'll also need a straight edge guide. There are some no frills homemade versions online, and if you're on a really tight budget, you might just start there. But if you plan on building many projects without a workshop, you should invest in something like Bora's WTX Clamp Edge Saw Guide System. It's fast and easy to use, and the key is the attachable saw plate. That will keep your saw from wandering away from the straight edge, a problem that a lot of people have with homemade guides. And it will grow with you as your skills improve and your projects get more complex. In a future video, for example, we'll be using the router attachment to cut dados and grooves. I'll link to all that below this video as well. Just click on Show More if you're on YouTube. Another key to clean cuts with the circular saw is a proper blade. The cheap blade you use to cut 2x4s will make a mess of good plywood. You need a 60 tooth blade that you keep clean and sharp. Set the depth so that it will cut just a little bit through the plywood and into the OSB beneath, and you're ready to make table saw quality cuts with no tear out. On a project like this, it's okay to cut all your plywood parts ahead of time. Then you can concentrate on assembly, which can be done outside if the weather holds up, or in my case, I was rained out, so I had to head inside. The strength of the bookcase comes from these side panels, especially if most of the shelves will be adjustable rather than fixed. So I laminated together two layers of plywood. This also makes it possible to create dados for the shelves that were fixed without the need for a router or a dado set in a table saw. I used a spacer to keep the parts that made up the inner layer just the right distance apart, creating those dados as I glued them in place. To avoid clamping, I shot in some brad nails if you don't have a pneumatic nailer, you can pound in some finishing nails by hand and use a nail set to set them below the surface. You could just use clamps and wait for the glue to dry, but these parts will tend to want to slip around as you clamp them, so I recommend at least a couple nails. The fixed shelves can then be glued into place into your dados. This will lock everything together and make the bookcase extremely strong. I recommend clamps for this final assembly because you can adjust their position to force the whole unit into square, angling the clamp one way or another to rack the whole unit in the direction needed. Once everything is dry, I install a kick plate on the lower shelf. This keeps dust and debris from getting beneath the bookcase, and it covers the ugly front edge of the lower plywood shelf. The edges of the double thick side panels are also covered with some clear pine. You can buy inch and a half wide clear pine at a home center, so there's no need to rip boards to width with a table saw. Again, you may use a hammer and a nail set to attach these if you don't have a pneumatic nailer. Here I made a mistake. When I tried to put the pine edging on the fixed shelf in the center of my bookcase, I noticed that it came out flush with the edging on the sides of the bookcase when I wanted it to be set back three quarters of an inch like the kick plate at the bottom of the bookcase. And when I tried to put edging on the top shelf, 
it was set back too far to come out flush with the sides, which I actually wanted up on the top for reasons you'll see later. I seem to have mixed those two shelf panels up. One was deeper than the other, and now they're glued into place. To fix it, I glued the pine edging on the underside of the center fix shelf instead of on its front edge. That leaves the plywood layers exposed, but I'll use edge banding to cover that up later and nobody will be the wiser. On the top shelf, I glue a spacer to the front edge to make that shelf the full depth that it was supposed to be. This is a great example of how everyone makes mistakes from time to time. And if you don't panic, you'll likely find a way to fix it. And as long as you don't go around pointing it out to other people when they look at your bookcase, no one's gonna know but you. Now that my top shelf is deep enough, I can begin working on the edging there. But this edging isn't glued in place. This will be our secret compartment. I'm just dry fitting the parts to see what they'll look like. The thinner strip is slightly longer than the wider piece. These two are glued to each other. While they dry, another piece is dry fitted between the two sides at the top of the bookshelf. I want a good friction fit here so it will stay in place without any glue around the edges. However, I do put some glue on the front of this piece of pine, being careful to stay away from the edges so any excess glue won't get on the bookcase as I attach those other two parts to it. The idea is for this whole final assembly to come out as a three-piece unit once everything is dry. Some narrow strips, which you may also find at a home center or a craft store, are attached to the edge of the bookcase to complete the wraparound trim. Then glue is carefully applied to the top of the plywood sides, not to the edge of the removable front panel assembly or else it won't be removable anymore. Then the top of the bookcase is attached. Note how it protrudes a bit on the sides and front, complementing the trim below it. I still have some plywood edges to cover, so I apply some thin iron-on edge banding. This can be an intimidating task if you've never done it before, but don't worry, it's not difficult at all. Just try to keep the banding straight as the iron softens the glue backing. Apply firm pressure and be sure the edging doesn't creep in the direction you're pushing the iron as you work. The edge banding is intentionally made a little bit wide to give you some room for air in case you're not perfectly straight. You can clean that up with a sharp razor blade or utility knife. But don't cut off big chunks all at once. Sort of nibble it back a little bit as you go along the edge or else you may tear out a big chunk. A block plane or a sanding block will smooth the rough edges left by the knife. I recommend a light sanding to soften all the sharp edges on the bookcase, even on the solid wood. Then fill your nail holes with putty and give everything a final sanding to 220 grit. Now for the adjustable shelves. I purchased metal shelf track from the home center. Before I assembled my project, I used a router table to cut shallow grooves for these tracks to set inside. I could have used a handheld router and an edge guide as well. But if you don't have a router, that's fine. You can attach these tracks right to the surface of the wood without any grooves. You'll just have to make your adjustable shelf panels a bit shorter to fit between those tracks. It's no problem at all. These tracks are great because the little clips that go in them make your shelves fast and easy to adjust, and they're easier to install than drilling rows of holes for shelf pins. Speaking of the adjustable shelves, each of those get a solid wood front to cover the plywood edge and to give them some extra stiffness. If you had to cut your shelves a bit shorter because your track isn't set in grooves, Make the front edge a bit longer to cover the gaps on either side of the shelf once they're installed. Paint covers a multitude of mistakes, so apply it in thin coats and everybody will think you're a woodworking master. What they won't know is you made this in your backyard with the minimal tools and you hid all the money you saved in the secret compartment on top. For project plans and links to the edge guide system I used, check out the notes below this video. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. And keep an eye out for even more unique projects using minimal tools and easy to find materials right here on the Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal channel. Who says you can't get track saw quality cuts from a simple circular saw? Bora Tools' new WTX clamp edge guide system is light, it's easily portable, and it's far less expensive. And with the optional router and jigsaw attachments, the system's more versatile too. Check it out at the link in the notes below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. 
It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.